so overwhelmed. Anyone, anyone heard that being said somewhere this week? Or maybe you said it yourself? Just so overwhelmed. We, we'll often say that when we've come to the end of our rope. Uh, when we've come to that moment where we just feel things are just way too difficult, too big for us to handle. But it also raises a question when we say, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. The question is this. How do we open our lives to God for God to do something new in our lives when we're overwhelmed? How do we open up when we feel that we want to close and allow God to do something new? And to help us with that, I'm going to take you to the story of, of Noah and the flood and the ark. Just kind of the last part of that. It's a story of a rainbow and a promise. It's a story for a time of crisis and a time when we are overwhelmed. So read with me in Genesis uh, chapter 9, uh, verses 8 to 13. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, I now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, all those that came out of the ark with you, every living creature on earth. And I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood, and never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you. A covenant for all generations to come. I've set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. So, I, I want us to notice a few things in the story of the flood. And we're talking about being overwhelmed. The first thing that I want us to notice is that Noah and those who were with him in the flood, during the flood, would have been overwhelmed by this flood. So let, let me paint the picture for you. See this in your mind's eye. So God comes to Noah, says to Noah, build an ark. Noah builds an ark. When the ark is done, God says, let's go into the ark. God closes the door behind them. And here they are in the ark. And then all of a sudden, you can go read this in chapter 7, verse 11, and verse 12, and verse 17, and 22. Uh, it says, and the floodgates of heaven just burst open. And the floodgates of earth opened up and the water gushed from the earth and the water came from heaven 40 days and 40 nights. Now imagine being in this box. There's no windows, only right under the roof at the top, 14 centimeters all around, but that's it. Otherwise, nothing. And it's raining. And I'm sure there was thunder and lightning. You're in the box. And then you feel the box tipping over because the water's kind of starting and then it comes up straight and you're thinking will this thing ever float never tried it out and then the water lifts it up and it starts drifting you have no rudder to steer you have no gps you don't know where you're going and where you're going to land and whether that's ever going to happen and for 40 days and 40 nights you're in this thing I am sure that you'll agree with me that somewhere, somehow, those who were in the ark were saying, I'm just a little overwhelmed. But there's a second level of being overwhelmed. I think this whole world was overwhelmed. Stripped to the core, broken. J just listen to these words. Genesis 7, verse 23. It says, Every living thing on the face of the earth was wiped out. People and animals and the creatures that move along the ground and the birds were wiped from the earth. Only Noah was left and those with him in the ark. This world was overwhelmed, stripped to its core and broken, nothing left. 
And somehow, my friends, I think when the overwhelmings come in our lives, I think they come on these two levels as well. When I just think of this world in which we are living right now and what this pandemic has done, it's overwhelmed the world in a way that it hasn't been overwhelmed for generations before us and in our time. It's overwhelmed to the point of hopelessness and helplessness, and not knowing what to do, not knowing when this is going to change. Every day waking up and thinking, what's coming next? Maybe it's breathing a little bit of a sigh of relief because somewhere it's also helping itself. But on that level of our personal lives, it touches us as well. We've had to adapt to so many new things. Who would have ever thought that the whole world was going to wear a mask over their faces? We were going to have to adapt to being at home with our kids and teaching them at home and having to deal with that. Adapt to being home and not being able to just go out and do whatever we want. Stand in line when we want to go buy groceries. Wait for the shopping cart to be clean before I can touch it. I get into my car and the first thing I do is hand sanitizer. Because I have to adapt. We're overwhelmed by, by the demands and responsibilities that all of a sudden have changed on us and become so much more in our lives. We're overwhelmed in, in, in our intimate relationships. I know in this past week, someone in our congregation had a birthday. And their daughter and her family couldn't go and visit. Because if they went, they would have been more than the five or six people that they can be at home. And they couldn't visit with their most intimate family. My little grandson turned two this past week. Couldn't have a party for his friends to come. Touches our most intimate relationships. We're overwhelmed with concern to take care of our children and of our aging parents and making sure that they are safe. We're overwhelmed with the sorrow of loss. How many people have lost their income, have lost their jobs, have lost their livelihoods in this day? In this day? but overwhelmed with the sorrow of death and the loss that comes with that. In this past month, my friends, I lost two of my friends to COVID-19 in South Africa. Young people, 69 years old. Here's the thing. Being overwhelmed and the overwhelmings coming at us, it's just the reality of the world in which we live. But the question is this, which I started in the beginning. How do we open our lives to God for God to do a new thing in our lives when we are overwhelmed? I'm not an expert. But here are two things that I think that can work. Because I've practiced that in my own life. The first thing we need to do with these overwhelmings is to name it. Because if we don't name it, it's just everything overwhelms me. And the more I say everything, these things get more and more hold of me and have control over my life. But if I can name it, this is what is causing this overwhelming feeling in my life. And this is what I've identified. Then I have power over it. Because then I can address it for what it is. And it loses its power over me. So when it comes to overwhelm you, name it. Call it out by its name. And say, this is what it is. The second thing that I think we need to do is that, that sometimes, and this is just who we are, right? Because it's the world in which we live. We, we kind of pull back and, and we try and do all of this on our own. Don't do it alone. When you're overwhelmed, find someone that you, that you can trust. Someone that's there with you that you can share this with. And I have found this because... Being a minister in this time is one of the most difficult things that I've done in my life. And it's the most amazing thing in my life, but it's been more difficult because being a minister means I have people and I work with people and I see people and I, and I counsel people and I'm loving people and I spend time with people and I can't. I see pews. That's all I see. 
when I stand in front of this camera. One person, my own daughter, sitting in the back. I don't see you. And sometimes those thoughts just come and they want to overwhelm me. And then I'll call one of my colleagues and we'll talk and we'll find, but, but we're all struggling with the same thing. We're worried. When the church opens, are we going to have people? What happened? And those thoughts will come at you, but you name them and I share them. And we, and we all say, oh, you've been thinking that too. And then we start chuckling a little bit. Just the other day, I, I sat with our family ministries pastor and, and she and I spoke about our ministries because it's with people. And we shared the things that scare us and overwhelm us. And in the moment when we shared that, we could both look at each other and say, thank you that I could share this with you. I feel so much better because I know there's someone else who gets this, who's been there, done that too. Don't do this on your own. It will bring you down. Share it. And I know that's difficult because we're locked down. We can't just go pick up the phone. And I know you're tired of a screen, but maybe take a moment and just FaceTime someone. Just talk. Find someone that you can share this with. I don't know what it is, but you'll know. Second thing. Not only was the experience of the flood and the ark an overwhelming experience, but the second thing that I think that we need to notice is that, that Noah made it through the flood because Noah followed God's guidelines and built an ark. Let me explain what I mean by that. Chapter 5, God comes to Noah. He says, Noah, I want you to build an ark. And God gives him instructions on exactly how this boat should look like. Now remember again, he lived in the desert. There was no water nearby, no lakes, no rain, no nothing. In the middle of the desert, God says, build a ship. It's kind of, really? Build a ship. Hebrew says, because of his faith, Noah built the ship. And because of that, Noah survived. All the people would be laughing. They did not make it. Noah survived the flood and the overwhelming of the flood because Noah followed God's guidelines and built an ark. And I know we're not going to build those arks. But here's what I was thinking. In the same way that the flood would shake everything to its core, shake up lives, and destroy them, except Noah, because Noah followed the guidelines. And that same way, our overwhelmings will come and knock our lives out of shape. And if we don't take care of the shape of our lives, and build our lives according to God's guidelines. If we are not careful, these overwhelmings will come and they will overwhelm our lives. So the question is not, will the overwhelmings come? The question is this, when the overwhelmings come, what are you going to do? How are you going to open your life, back to my question, for God to do a new thing in your life so that you will not be overwhelmed during this time? So maybe I can just say it in silly words. How does your ark look like that you are building for when those overwhelmings come? The ark that God says, here's my guidelines. Can I tell you what I'm doing? Part of my build is the woman that God blessed me with in my life, my wife Elsie. What an amazing gift from God to me. When these things come at me, she's the one that I can go sit on the bed with at night and say, can I just talk to you about this? Can I just tell you how I feel? I don't need answers. I don't need anything. I just need you to know and I just need you to be there. And she will hold my hand and, and she will listen to me and she will hug me and she will hold me. And I know that this is my ark that I can hold onto that will be there for me. I can't do this if I don't spend 
very important, precious time with the Lord. And in the mornings, that's my time because everyone is gone. They have to work. And I'm alone. And I can be in that office and I can just spend time with God and in God's word and in prayer and asking questions and just saying to God how I feel. And this is my ark that keeps me safe when the overwhelmings come. There's a silly little thing that's so huge in my life. I cook dinner for my family every day. That's my joy. I like cooking. And you know what's so neat? When we can sit at that table, all of us, and we have that meal together, and we can talk. How was your day? What's going on in your life? How are you blessed? How are you struggling? And we can eat together and laugh and smile and, and enjoy. And we have an ark that keeps us safe from the overwhelmings that come at us. I don't know. I don't know what you need to do to allow God to do something new in this time when the overwhelmings come at you. But will you be like Moses and trust God? Why will I build an ark? There's no... Trust me. And then when the overwhelming came, Noah survived because Noah followed God's guidelines. Let me end. There's a third thing. God not only was there through the overwhelming, Noah didn't just follow God's guideline, but God gave Noah a sign of God's faithfulness and that God never gives up on us. Go read those last few verses again, verse 11, 12, 13, and you'll see God comes and he says, I want to make an everlasting covenant with you. Hebrew says a covenant of salt. Remember what I told you. When you go to the, to the people in the Middle East and they share salt with you, it says, you're my family. I will protect you. I will be with you. I will care for you. I will love you. God says, I want to make a covenant of salt with you everlasting and this is my covenant i will never do this to this earth again and then god says i will give you a sign so that when you see that you will remember i made a covenant i will put my bow hebrew doesn't know the word hebrew uh, rainbow it knows the word bow that's what it writes there it says i will put my bow in the sky and when you see my bow you will remember that i said this is my covenant with you because a covenant means that God says, I've made a commitment to you. I, I, I commit myself and all my resources to you and I will take care of you. And it's so beautiful if you see how this has come. Because in chapter 5, God says, I regret making human beings. And then a little later, God says, it breaks my heart when I look at all of this. And then, and then comes chapter 9 and God says, I want to start new. I want to start the covenant with you and give you a sign. And God went one step further for us. For when this world was overwhelmed and in darkness and lost, God sent his son into this world. And we, and we have a sign we see an empty cross, and every Sunday you see me, you see a cross behind me to remind us. On that cross, Jesus died, and he said, I died there so that when you are overwhelmed, you can come to me. I died there so that you will never be alone in your overwhelmings. I will be there. God said, I'm going to give you a new sign. And Jesus says, here's a new covenant in my blood. And in a few weeks, we're going to do that again. We'll take a piece of bread, and we'll take some wine, and when we taste and smell and see that the Lord is good because the Lord says here is my sign that I will be with you in all of your overwhelmings and when it becomes a little too much go to Psalm 61 verse 2 but go read it in the Amplified Bible from the end of the earth I will call to you when my heart is overwhelmed. And then, then lead me to the rock that is higher than I. When the overwhelmings come, call 
about the overwhelming of your heart and allow him to lead you to the rock that is higher. Amen. Pray with me. How amazing are you, God? That you are there in all these times of our lives. Not just in the time of joy and happiness, but you are there when we are overwhelmed. And even if we're in that ark and it's thundering and lightning and, and scary, the one thing we can hold on is your covenant. This is my promise. When you are overwhelmed, come to me. When you can't bear this alone, come to me because my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Come to me all who are weary and overladen with this world and I will give you rest. Help us to find that in you. Thank you. Thank you that when we are overwhelmed, we have a place to go because of you, Lord Jesus. And it is in your name that we pray. Amen.